sin and damnation. Now, it's been a while since I've recited this one, so sometimes if I want, I can cheat and look at the book. Let's read it. I think there's like six sub-principles of this one, and these are the these six sub-principles are the actual sins themselves. Excuse me. <laughs> Pardon me. Mm. It's quite a ways through. It's after. There it is right there. Okay, so in the book, in the chapter titled The Good Life, you can find all of the principles and objectives laid out. There it is right there. Okay. Sin and damnation, the sub-principles of which are falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma, authority, rumor, and gossip. Now, I don't believe in God, so these aren't sins against some deity. These are sins against uh, my own desire and interest in pursuing virtue, where virtue is defined as the efforts as an eff efforts to improve the well-being of thinking creatures. The sins then are the sins against that effort, that, that, that endeavor, that pursuit, that life in pursuit of virtue. Falsity means being untrue. Credulity means believing things too readily. Faith is a strange creature. It is uh, virtue, it is, is vice masquerading as virtue. It is um, what we use to satisfy our the beliefs that we want to hold in the absence of good reason to hold that belief. So I don't know how this ever became confused with virtue where people think that they just need faith or that faith is somehow a good thing. It's not. It's a sin in my worldview. It's a sin to believe things just because you want to believe them, just because you, you know, convinced yourself to, desire, to believe that it's true, even though you may not have good reason to believe so and good evidence to believe so, and somehow often in, in spite of bad evidence. Superstition is on the list because it's uh, almost a categorical uh, area of seeming nonsense. I say seeming because it could be true. Bigfoot might be real. UFOs might be out there, indeed, uh, uh, zipping around our skies. The Loch Ness Monster might be there. Uh, you know, maybe it is a good idea to throw salt over your shoulder if you know, to avoid the evil lie. But for the most part, I think I can categorically uh, dismiss without evidence those things that purport to be true based on little or no evidence. Dogma and authority kind of go together. Dogma is the corpus of belief that we then refer to in sustaining our worldview and our own creed, or, or the creed that we choose to abide. The dogma of a religion, for example, are the things that we must, that the religion expects us to believe and on board to be a part of that religion. I don't hold that that's a good thing. I mean, you could call the good life creed a dogma, if you like, but I don't require, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a creed of one. It's my own creed. I don't require myself to believe it without sustaining it. And I, how do I sustain it? Well, by this very exercise, the purpose, the reason I started doing this good life meditation all those years ago was to have a daily challenge to myself to one, remember the creed principles and objectives, and two, to challenge myself to see if they be, if they be sound. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. So it's a dogma under scrutiny. In that way, but I would so I guess I would say unscrutinized dogma, unconsidered dogma, dogma accepted on faith. <laughs> Authority is next to that. The ways that I say that those kind of two go together is often religions have that they'll have dogma s supported by authority or overseen by authority. Authority, of course, is is believing something because it appears that the office or the person who is purporting such a thing to be true or important seems to have credentials. Credentials aren't enough. Reasons, good reasons, are, are usually enough. Although, you know, there are cases where credentials are enough. Like if a policeman pulls me over at the side of the road, I will pull over and I will follow his or her instructions due to their authority. I don't know them otherwise. That's part of the reason why for the uniform and the, and the badge. But to rest my... My worldview on an unchallenged authority is asking too much. 
And then the last two are kind of separate from these. These are rumor and gossip. I just say these are sins because they're just bad things to do. It's bad to trade in rumor. It's lazy. It's ineffectual. Um, it's evil in some ways. It, it is. And then gossip, of course, is, uh, is, 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 is trading in rumors, um, it, which is it's just an awful use of time. So these are the sins in my worldview. The damnation part is what comes of executing or being involved in any of these things. We then suffer a life of damnation, living a life that is un or or, or not sufficiently uh, examined or overseen by ourselves or regulated. So let's go ahead and read what it says. Okay, sin and damnation. Some principles again. Falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma, authority, rumor, and gossip. It is a sin to invest our expectations with hope, which may be corrupted or foiled by fortune. It is also a sin to believe things without good reason, to acquiesce for the sake of comfort or security or peace, or to simply avoid the discomfort of not knowing. The penalty for this, for this sin is damnation in the here and now which is the only time we will ever really have. Damned for our unreasoned want. Damned for our unreasoned belief. Damned for our thoughtless, careless communications. That's the uh, sin, the principle called sin and damnation. <clears throat> 